two, three, four. Hi there. Welcome to the Trudy Myrtle podcast. This is episode number eight. It's August. I think that's right. And I'm Libby. Welcome back. If you've been before, it's lovely to see you again. And if you haven't visited, uh, welcome. It's lovely to have you here. Now, I've got a quiet moment. The kids are at school. I was supposed to record yesterday, but I wasn't feeling great. So I thought I'd wait till today. And I'm glad I did because the sun is shining, starting to feel a little bit like spring is coming. And um, I'm ready to roll. So what have I got to show you? I've had to make a list because it's a bit here and there scattered about. I'm going to start with some new wool. Now, if you follow my blog, which is trudymyrtle.com, I did say I was Libby, didn't I? Libby, you can find me everywhere as Trudy Myrtle. Um, Instagram, I'm Trudy Myrtle Photos. So yeah, that's that's where, that's me anyway. Um, so I joined this wool cl uh, yarn club. I've never I've never joined a yarn club before. I'm not sure why. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure why. I'm not a huge fan of surprises. I love surprises, but um, committing to a surprise, I'm not sure that that has always appealed to me. But anyway, um, being down here in New Zealand, it costs a lot of money for um, yarn to get posted down here. So I was quite keen to sign up for Tasha's Yarn Club. It's called North. It's run by Tasha at Holland Road Yarn Company in Wellington here in New Zealand. And what she's done is she's gathered three uh, dyers from the Northern Hemisphere and has... Um, worked out with them that they would send her a skein of yarn every month for three months and we would sign up and receive that so I did get a sneaky peek to know who they were because I because I she told me so I was a bit lucky so I know who they are although I've actually forgotten the third one I can remember the first and second but I forgot the third doesn't matter I didn't know what color it was going to be um, but I was sufficiently convinced that I would probably like the stuff I was going to get that I signed up and I'm so pleased I did because I got my first um, package in the mail the other day. I, I forgot it was coming. So the first one is this fabulous skein of uh, BFL fingering from Lisa Much at Northbound Knitting. Now I have been following Lisa for a while on Instagram and um, she's got some fabulous stuff. She dyes well and she designs and so I was quite keen to see what she might come up with for this yarn club. Now this is called Clarity. I said it's a BFL. It's fingering weights is about uh, 438 yards. It's roughly 400 meters of um, fiber and it's the sort of grays through to oh sort of a citrusy green yellow. Um, yeah really khaki kind of yellow color. So I'm really pleased. I think it's going to be really pretty. Um, I'm, I'm tempted to mix it with something in a stripe another plain color maybe try and get hold of more of the gray or something a bit lighter I'm I'm not sure yet but I think it will become a shawl a sort of a funky shawl and I'm tempted to try and get hold of a bit more perhaps from her although apparently it's impossible to get wool from her without pre-ordering so I don't know how I'll do that maybe I'll mix it with something else anyway th I got that and it came with these nifty little snips aren't they great I just, I needed these. I didn't know I needed these, and I did. They're fantastic. They're very sharp. They're very pointy. So they have a little um, pouch that they go in, so they can go in my Notions bag. But I think they're fantastic. So I got my little snips and my um, yarn, and then I got some pencils that had um, little knitting-related um, things on them, like Knit Two Together and Sip Slip Knit. I think that was the two of them. And... Some chocolate, which I gave to Mr. Myrtle. So all in all, it was very successful. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to next month to see how that gets on. Now, I know that Tash has still got places for her south um, part of the club, which is the second half of the club, which will run. This will be August, September, October for north. And then November, December, January, I'm pretty sure that's right, will be south. And I'm pretty sure there's still places left for south. And that will feature three um, uh, dyers from the southern hemisphere so if you're in the northern hemisphere you might like to take part and just to see what some of these lovely southern he southern hemisphere dyers have got to offer um, but yeah I was really pleased with north so far so that was one of my exciting things the other thing I did for the first time in this last little while I'm pretty sure I didn't show you this last time was take part in a um, swap and I've never taken part in a swap either this year is full of new things for me 
So I was allocated someone and someone was allocated to me. It was just a little group of New Zealand um, designers and dyers who took part. I think that's mostly who it was. Uh, just a small group and um, I was allocated Julie from Three Footed Warrior who lives just down the line from me and um, Joe, a Meraki studio, was given me. So I didn't know. We didn't know who was giving to whom. So I put together a little parcel and then Joe put together her little parcel and it was so neat. Some of it I've left around. So this is the yarn she sent me. It's some of her own dyed yarn. It's a merino cashmere nylon blend which is perfect, perfect in a, in a fingering um, which is perfect for the shawl. My, my new shawl that's coming out, that's the same blend that I used for that and it's so soft and so cosy. So this could well become another one of those I suspect. Um, I don't know. I haven't made any firm plans for it yet, but it's a really pretty colour. She went with a theme colour because she also sent me this fantastic mug, which I have been really enjoying because it fits a whole pot of my little teapot. I put the whole pot in, so it's two cups full. It's perfect. Perfect for me. I got some little um, candlesticks that were in matching sort of tealy colours and some stitch markers and some coffee. No, tea. Tea. It was really fun to getting a parcel so I've signed up for another swap um, because I'm off to knit August nights the knitting retreat in a couple of weeks and there's um, some swaps going on there too so they're doing a mystery swap with other attendees and I've started gathering together I know who I'm giving to but uh, no she doesn't know and I've started gathering together some stuff that that she might like so if you haven't done a swap you should have a go I really enjoyed it I think I really enjoyed putting the present together even more than I enjoyed getting the present. Um, I loved getting the present, but oh, it was, it was so much fun planning um, a gift. I really, I really enjoyed that for another creative person. It was fantastic, really good. So that's, um, I can recommend it. Now, I've got a couple of new things. I really have, I'm gonna whip through the new things. Now, yesterday I received in the mail, I bought, and it finally arrived in the mail, this absolutely gorgeous little pouch. It's um, a recycle from Tweed, an old Tweed jacket, and it's got beautiful Scottish linen inside and this lovely funky zip. And it's going to be my new kind of pop in my bag and take with me pouch with all my bits and pieces. So my new little snips can go in it and my tape measures and things like that, pencils and stuff that I need that I take around with me. My, you know, sort of, um, yeah, little bits and pieces, my ne little needle case and things like that. Anyway, I got it from Julia at um, Woolen Flower in Scotland. Now, Julia is from Australia and she moved in, in Melbourne, I think, and she moved to um, Scotland earlier this year. I was a little bit envious because I loved Scotland and I knew what she would be going to. So I hope she's having a good time. But um, she started making and selling these absolutely gorgeous little uh, recycled tweed pouches. And um, so I had to buy one. I just thought that was so fantastic. So she does uh, fairly regular updates. Not, not huge updates, so you need to watch out to know that they're coming. But I follow her on Instagram. She's also got a blog, Woolen Flower. Um, so go and check them out. And I'm not sure if there's any left in this last stocking. Uh, but if there is, there's a variety of tweeds to choose from. And they're just, they're really well made. And I'm really pleased. It's a lovely little pouch. So I'm looking forward to putting all my goodies in that. So that was a bit of a splurge for me. I enjoyed that. I, I, um, I don't know what came over me. I've got two more things I splurged on uh, because I regularly take the kids to the library. We go every Monday, every Wednesday, something like that. We go once a week to the library and we have a big basket that I keep by the door that all the library books go into and um, so we make good use of our library. Anyway, the library catalogue here in Auckland where I am is fantastic. It's a really good catalogue, um, particularly of craft books. I'm just stunned by some of the craft books they've got. So when I was there the other day, I borrowed this book. Now I'd heard about Cowpatch because Cowpatch has got a, a Creative Bug class and I signed up for Creative Bug over um, July or June, I think, um, to see what it was like. And um, and yeah, and I, I saw that she had this design clothing workshop. I, I didn't do it. I was too busy doing too many other, looking at too many other classes. But when I saw this at the library, I thought I'd take it home and have a look. Now, the clothes on the front are not necessarily all things that I would desperately want, but the general shapes are good. I can see myself in that sundress. That's quite cute. 
um, but the general shapes are great and what I, I had to buy it so that's the long and the short of the story is I brought it home I had a read and I thought actually I could really do with owning this book because it talks about why make your own patterns um, uh, taking measurements of yourself and then drafting them so she's got some lights and thank you little look at those and now I have a problem Mr Myrtle thinks I look too short when I wear those he's probably right but I think they're so cute so I'm probably going to keep wearing them but I thought I'd make another pair they're so sweet um it's got yeah lots of ideas of how you can adapt the basic shapes in this in this book let me show you and I'll show you one of my favorite ones is I'm probably far too old for now really but I did like it and it would be very useful oh like there's this this isn't one I was talking about but there's that cute little dress tie I'd probably wear it at the top I don't think I'd wear anything quite so short you see um those little shorts I thought were cute nice little long sleeve tops so these are the basic shapes that you can then adjust to I mean they've got a you can adjust one of the top patterns to be a shirt um, more shorts and trousers oh I can't find the picture I was looking for Anyway, it's very cute. Little uh, leggings. Leggings in a, in a little tight, tight top. But basically, you can make a variety of different... I wear a lot of tops like this. A lot. They're my real basic in my wardrobe. T-shirts in the summer and long sleeve tops in the winter. I like keeping warm. So I wear layers and layers of tops. Um, so it just tells you different ways to adjust them and how to make them and how to make um, your own pattern from your body shape and your body measurements. So I thought, right, that's it. I'm getting quite... Um, keen on getting good fit now I don't know what it is maybe I've just got older I don't know my body shape's changed I, it isn't you know I haven't got the same figure that I had when I was 20 clearly I've had four children um, and uh, I'm still small but I'm not any one particular size so I'm actually three different sizes I think I'm uh, yeah I'm three different sizes my bust waist hips so it's I have to fiddle around with patterns anyway um, and I thought it would be quite nice to actually have a go at designing my own. I have been quite interested in a long time in doing that. But this, but I haven't really had the confidence with any of the... I've got some really old books, but they're not quite as clear. So I, I haven't used it yet. I will report back when I have. But um, yeah, it's just got lots of, lots of illustrations, lots of tips, lots of ideas. And um, so I thought I would... Have a go and I'll report back when I have and let you know how I've got on. But it's pattern making design itself or pattern making simplified. That that sounded appealing. Design this design it yourself clothes by Cal Patch. So I got that. And I got another one. And this was a, a totally on a whim. But I'd seen I knew about it for ages and I read on a blog I was reading recently, a sewing blog. I mean not even remember which one. I can't even remember which one it was. A big sewing blog and she said she doesn't do a bust dart adjustment without going back to this book every time and I thought well oh, clearly I need that book obviously I need that book then because this is exactly the kind of thing that I want to be learning more about and it is the Colette sewing handbook so um, I've heard great things about it um, I follow the Colette blog I look at you know I've used Colette patterns and I really like the stuff that they do so I um I bought it. Now it comes with five patterns um, in it. There's a few dresses. None of them, uh, I'm not in love with any of them particularly, but um, I love the idea of, of um, being able to adjust things better and make them fit me better. And there's lots of information about how to do that in the book, where to put darts and how to adjust and flare things and... It felt like a book I needed, so I got that. So I haven't used it yet. Either they're only brand new, they only arrived the other day. Um, but I intend to do a bit of learning and get stuck in and see if I can figure this out a bit better. So, I have actually done some sewing. Should I just leap straight into that? Mm. I've done some sewing. I've made my little top that I'm wearing. Now, there's a story about this top. It's a little merino, it's long sleeves goes all the way down. It's a really fine, beautifully fine, beautifully soft um, merino stretch. And I do love it. It's a lovely fabric. So it's got a little, it's, it's, all, it's got a widish neck now. Look, it's not too bad actually. But I do wear a thing that underneath to stay warm. <laughs> See, I like to stay warm. So it was all going swimmingly well. Um, and then I went to put the neckband on. And that's when I started to get a bit fussy. 
because I wanted the neckband to be just a dark band. And so it was quite important that I didn't catch any of the cream in it, or if I did, that it was a beautifully even amount. So that was really hard. I tried three times to do the neckband. And of course, what happens is every time you do it and you fail, you lose a little bit more of the neckband. So it's got wider than I would have liked. It actually looks worse on the screen. It, it's actually fine in real life. Um, it got wider than I would have liked. And in the end, I thought, I cannot try again. I'm not, this is not working. I, I'm just, I'm being too fussy. And I gave up. So in the end, all I did was I folded it over and I did a little zigzag, which is actually fine. So I zigzag the edge of all of the um, all of the edges of my sleeves, which actually roll rather nicely. I quite like the way they roll. And of the bottom, I just did a little turned up zigzag and that's fine, that works fine. But I do have to, um, I did ask on Instagram for some ideas and, or, and Facebook and lots of people gave me some good ideas, which I haven't, I didn't use. <laughs> I did, I folded it down and zigzagged it. But um, people suggested putting a little bit of elastic in and other people suggested um, using a bit of interfacing. I'm trying to get my sure right uh, the, using a bit of interfa interfacing or paper to hold it down and all of that sounded great I think what I should have done is not try to do it with my overlocker because I just felt like it was too clumsy when I was going through I should have just abandoned that idea and done it with my walking foot on my sewing machine um, and then maybe finish the edge with my overlocker or just zigzagged it and turned the little band up but um, yeah never mind but it, it's fine worked out fine in the end the neck is slightly larger than I would have liked than I was aiming for anyway um, but it's it's fine it worked out I'm wearing it today with my Grace Cardi which I've showed you before and my Antipodes shawl and my handmade necklace which I love this little wooden these are actually little beads that I've just strung onto a black cord and done a little backwards knotted thing and yeah I like this little necklace so that's what I'm wearing it with today um, yeah, so that was some sewing. Oh, I did some other sewing. It's right behind me. So the other thing I did was I made these out of one of the Japanese sewing books, which is out now out of reach. I should go and get it. Um, so this was a muslin, a cotton muslin that was just lying around from my mother's stash. She's de-stashed some things to me. So I dyed it this grey, sort of bluey grey colour. And I thought I would make the French baby doll top from um, the stylish sewing book, I think it's called. Stylish sewing book. Simple modern sewing. That might be what it's called. So I made it and I was surprised to find that the sizing was quite big. I, I would have thought it would be smaller on the Japanese book, but it wasn't. It seemed to be reasonably big, so I, I found the top, the front was gaping a bit, so I took a great big whack of it out of the side. Um, anyway, it's quite cute now. It's, it did look like I was wearing some sort of factory shift dress or apron before I had the sleeves on. It wasn't a good look at all. Um, but the sleeves have helped and I've just done, it's got all these raw edges, which I love. So I'm actually trying to snip, oh look at that one. I'm actually trying to snip off the bits as they appear, but eventually it will just be a nice simple raw edge. Um, like the sleeves have kind of worked their way out. There's a tiny seam, can you see it there? A tiny seam just to hold it in and I've done the same at the bottom and down the side. So that was sort of the look of it and then the front is faced with this satin um, and, um, binding, bias binding. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with that. I wore it when I did a photo shoot for one of my new patterns that I haven't showed you yet that will be out shortly. Um, it's quite a romantic uh, lacy shawl and I wanted to kind of balance it with something a bit more modern. So um, I wore that top with it. And it looked really good, I thought. It looked nice. So I'll, I'll wear that again together. In fact, part of the reason I've been doing a bit more sewing is because I'm going to this... Um, knitting event at the end of the month and I want to take some new clothes with me so I have that outfit which I may or may not wear this top underneath I have another top I wear underneath it as well um, and then I've got this top the thing I thought I'd make to wear over this top was this dress <laughs> this dress that's um that's not finished yet but will be finished it's a really simple uh, shift dress and I'm going to pull it in with a little brown belt at my waist so it's cut out I found that it's really helpful for me when I'm hunting for pockets of time to do sewing in to um, take things into tiny steps, break things down into tiny steps. So I will um, cut out the, the, the pattern one day or I'll assemble the PDF it's a PDF and then the next day I'll trace it and then another day if I'm just you know waiting for something to cook or you know, I have a moment, I will trace out the pattern and then the following day or a few days later, whenever I get a moment, 
I cut out the fabric and that's exactly what I've done for this one. So now I'm at the stage where everything's cut out and I'm ready just to sit down and sew. And that speeds things up. For me it just means I don't need a big block of time. I can just break it into little chunks um, and then I can get to it much more easily. So that's all my sewing that I've done. There will be more next time because I've got ambitious plans to get a bit more done before I go. I've only got a couple of weeks, but I've just, I have actually said to myself, right, that day you will sew. Unfortunately, I keep making appointments and kids' sports events and things like that keep happening on those days. So I'm, we'll see. I'll try. I'll try and get it done. I finished some knitting. Did I show you this last time? The month goes so fast, doesn't it? I just, oh, it goes so fast. This is my new little hat pattern that's coming out. I'm not going to put it on because my hair's up. But um, trust me, it's really cute. Um, it's got this lovely little panel on the side and it's got a little stripe through it. Can you see that? It's a really subtle, elegant little stripe and I love it with twisted switch stitches. Um, it's called Tui, this little hat. No, it's not. It's called Koru. It's not called Tui. Tui's a bird here. Koru is a plant. So Korus are the little... Um, curled ferns that you see in lots of New Zealand um, images have pictures of curled ferns because we have a lot of ferns here um, you know we're, we're semi-tropical <laughs> not today <laughs> um, anyway it's called koru and it's made with um, this beautiful yarn which is a merino possum blend uh, possums are a huge pest here they eat our trees enough and um, then our native birds are killed uh, because they don't have the trees and so they're culled we try and keep on, well, it's impossible. It's an impossible task to keep um, on top of the possums. There are millions and millions of possums decimating the New Zealand bush um, and our grapefruit tree and our orange tree as well. They eat, they just will go in and eat oranges while you sleep. It's very annoying. Um, so they do cull them where they can and they use the fibre to make um, yarn, to put into yarn. It's, it's a hair. So you can't spin it on its own. You mix it with something else. And uh, Merino is an obvious choice here, being a you know a big Merino producer. But the thing about possum is I believe it's hypoallergenic. Um, and it's incredibly warm and incredibly soft and very, very light. So um, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful to wear. It has a dark halo. You can see a sort of a dark halo on this. And that's the possum because it's a dark fur. And um, so this light is this hat is a very light hat because it's saying it's 25% possum in it. So I think what that means is that the yarn seems to go further because it, you have the thickness of the fiber, but I think you might get more. Well, I don't know if you do get more meterage to 100 grams, but whatever the case is, I use less than 50 grams to make this hat, and this is a medium size. So you might need slightly more if you're not using possum. I put that in the pattern. Um, but it's a cute little sort of slightly slouchy beanie that uses not a lot of yarn and has a very pretty pattern which is fun and I'm going to do a whole bunch of tutorials to help you with some of these stitches because they're not tricky but you may not have done some of them before they're decreases that twist stitches and create that as nice little lines as they go up um, but yeah keep an eye out for that it'll be out it'll be out in September I just sent it off to the testers yesterday uh, so they've got a couple of weeks to work on that few weeks I've given them to work on that and um, it'll be out in early September. Now, early September, let me tell you while I remember, uh, we've just wrapped up a knit-along in the Truly Myrtle Ravelry group, which was such good fun. Uh, we had a knit-along where we knitted up all the Truly Myrtle patterns, and I had a bunch of fantastic prizes um, at the end of the month, and it was lots of chit-chat and fun, and, and uh, yeah, lots of people made some beautiful shawls and hats. So at the end of the month, there were 77 shawls and hats finished. I was so impressed. Some people made three. Oh, amazing, amazing in the space of a month. So it was really good fun. We had a blast and um, I'm having another one. So I'm not actually having it in the Trudy Myrtle group. I signed up for this uh, earlier in the year. I think last year, actually, I signed up for this uh, knit along. And it's in the Budding Designers Down Under um, Ravelry group which I'm a member of, um, every month they feature a different designer and do a knit along for that designer. Now mine is going to be a, a stitch along or a craft along because you can knit or crochet, I think even so. I'm going to say do something for you. The theme of the knit along is spoil yourself. So the, the, you, it needs to be for you really. I want you to spoil yourself with something fun and um one, and so you can use some of my knitting patterns or you can crochet something from someone else or sew a sewing pattern. 
um, so it's going to be pretty flexible. It'll start on the 1st of September. I'll have a little discount on my patterns in the last week of August. Um, so keep an eye out on the blog for that. I'm on Instagram and Facebook. I'll let you all know when that starts. And then we'll kick off on the 1st of September and run for the month of September. And you need to come along to the budding designers down under group and join in the chit chat and then put your finished objects on the finished object thread. At this stage, I'm not entirely sure whether you need to be a member of the group to win a prize, but you might need to be a member of the group to win a prize. Um, I'll put all the blurb up in the beginning. I'm not, I'm not sure about that. Um, but yeah, come and join us. It will be really fun. And uh, I do like a knit along. It is fun. I've always been pretty hopeless about actually finishing things in the knit along, but I did find that when it was mine, I actually got quite a lot done. So it was because I was doing new patterns, I think. And so I got three new things finished um, last month. So that was pretty cool. And um, they'll all come out soon and ready for this next one, which will be great. Um, I've done a little bit more knitting on my uh, sweater that I'm designing. I've finished the body. And here it is here. So it's all blocked and ready for the next patch. This is the feature of the body. It has this little ribbed, lacy ribbed pattern. It's fairly um, boxy little jumper. It should be quite cute to wear. Sort of a nice little modern shape. It's got a fairly full body. And then it's hip length. And then um, the arms are reasonably fitted in comparison and they're set in. So I'm working on an arm at the moment. Same detailing. So it's very simple. Const, uh, construction and that it's uh, knitted from the bottom up and then joining at the shoulders with a three needle bind off um, and then knitting the sleeves in the round until you get to the armhole and then flat and then sewing them in. I wanted something that was going to give you good structure through the shoulders given that it's quite a full body um, and slimmer sleeve so anyway it's a work in progress I um, it didn't take me long to knit the sleeve I need to just get on and hurry up and finish it so that I'm hoping I'll be able to work away at that in the background as well. Um, what else did I have to tell you? Oh, I had that problem with my overlocker last time and I bought some new needles and this one was fine, this top that I've made. So I'm hoping that that problem has been solved. Thank you so much for all your advice. I've got heaps of ideas um, and suggestions. I'm looking up my notes here to see what else I need to tell you about. I've got heaps of ideas about things to try, and but it did seem a lot of people thought it was probably... A blunt needle so um, I changed those and fingers crossed that we've done it now something else I had to tell you was um, I'm joining I am joining in the curious handmade um, wardrobe challenge and so Helen on uh, from the curious handmade podcast has contacted me and she is running a um, challenge over the next three months August September October to make yourself a piece of clothing so she's, she's enjoying all this handmade wardrobe stuff that's happening around and about. And um, she's decided that she wants to try and help everybody, mobilize everyone to actually have a go and do it. And I'm, yahoo, I'm right behind her. So um, she's going to have pot, um, interviews and blog posts through those months, helping support you uh, with your handmade wardrobe challenge. And she's got, hang on, oh, look, I've pushed the wrong button again. Let me have a look. Um, Curious Handmade Wardrobe Challenge is the name of it. So go and have a look at Curious Handmade. Uh, she talked about it in her podcast last week. So by the time you see this, you, she might be on to the second podcast. Um, but she'll link, you can find it and link back to that. I'll put all my notes, my show notes um, for the show at the bottom of my blog post. So go and have a look for those. Um, she's got a hashtag, so you can use it on uh, Facebook and Instagram. CHW Challenge. CHW are in capitals challenge in small letters so use the chw challenge hashtag make yourself something it doesn't have to be big and if you're a really nervous sewer knit something and if you're a really nervous knitter sew something um it can extend to all sorts of things you can make yourself some jewelry and a bag to go over your shoulder a hat whatever whatever have a go um so yeah keep an eye on her blog and keep an eye on her podcast and follow along go and have a look in her Ravelry group on um in Ravelry the Curious Handmade Ravelry group and there'll be lots of people chitter chatting and having fun and joining in this challenge so it should be really good I think and I'm I'm going to be there so I hope I'll see you there too um I think that's nearly all I had to tell you there's one more thing I wanted to tell you before that I, you'll see my yarn pile has gone down behind me this pile here and here my two shelves it got completely overwhelming I keep getting more and more yarn out of the cupboard and thinking, oh, I'll design that. Oh, 
oh, oh, I'll make that. Oh, and I kept having all these ideas and then looking at the pile and thinking, oh no, that's too much. I can't do all that. So I put it all back. I put it all back and just pulled out probably too much again, but I just pulled out a few things that I know I really want to get done soon. So um, my favorite pile hasn't had the same treatment yet. That hasn't quite been so overwhelming, but my, um, my yarn piles are significantly reduced because I just needed to whew, calm down a bit about that and work out what I really could do. Now, if you follow me on Instagram or um, Facebook, you will see that in the holidays I had a little bit of a um, moan about the school uniforms in New Zealand, my kids' school uniform particularly, uh, because they wear um, polycotton mixes, polyester, completely polyester tops and, um, f and polar fleece sweatshirts to school. And I really miss not being able to put them in natural fibres to go to school. I'm a bit of a natural fibre junkie, particularly wool. And um, it seems crazy to me that we live in a country with far, far more sheep than uh, people, millions more sheep than people. There are four million people in New Zealand, maybe four and a half now. Um, and there's like tens of millions of sheep. But anyway, and we put our children in plastic sweatshirts. It seems crazy. So apparently I wasn't alone. My sister-in-law um, sent me a link to uh, an, an article which must have only just come out at the same time from a family in the South Island of New Zealand who was sending their, daughter, their eldest daughter to school and were also disappointed that they were having to put her in plastic, only they were slightly more proactive than I was. And they actually, they're farmers, and so they actually started a company producing uh, merino sweatshirt jerseys for kids for school. So I contacted them and I said, oh, I like the sound of that. Um, tell me more because I want to talk to my school about this. So they sent me a couple of samples. There they are. They are an entirely New Zealand made product. They're New Zealand sheep, they're New Zealand made, um, and they're called Merino Wool for School. And they sent me a red one and a blue one because my kids have red and blue uniforms, exactly these colors actually, red and blue. Um, and they can do a mix match if you want different colored sleeves and different color jumpers, and they will put the logo of your school on the jumper. So they're lovely, they're lovely and warm. I just, I can't believe it. So I took it to the um, PTA at school and they said they liked the idea too. And um, I now have to go to the board of trustees. So I'm gonna try and see if we can't get them at least as an option in our school uniform. Won't that be fun? Watch this space. We'll see. We'll see if I can do it and um, get them to introduce them. Anyway, I think that was all I had time for today. It's time for me to make my lunch and have a quick whip round before the kids get home. Um, I might have forgotten something. I can't remember. My my computer is telling me it's about to go flat, so I need to get off it before it does. Uh, but it was lovely talking to you. And come and find me, Trudy Myrtle, TrudyMyrtle.com, Trudy Myrtle on Ravelry. Uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, I'm Trudy Myrtle Photos. It'd be lovely to say hi. If you're going to Knit August Nights in Napier at the end of August, the last weekend, please say hello to me. I would love to meet you. I really enjoyed meeting so many of you at the Wool Festival um, here in Auckland in May. And if you're going to be in, um, in Napier in August, we've got a whole weekend. I cannot wait. I cannot wait. It's going to be so much fun. I'm doing some fantastic classes. I'm going to have heaps to tell you about when I get back. And um, so come and say hi. That would be great. I'm it's going to be just me. Mr. Myrtle's looking after the kids and staying. They're all staying home. So this is, this is quite an adventure for me, getting away. I think it's the first time I've ever done that, actually, since I've had children. So it's, um, yay, won't it be exciting? So cool. Have a lovely day. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Two, three, four. Is it a scar or is it half of a sweater? From what I've heard, it could be a third of a poncho. There's no excuse now not to be knitting, because you can do it standing and you can do it sitting. Is it a hat or is it the start of a blanket? Maybe a ball or even a shawl for a baby. There's no excuse now not to be knitting Cause you can do it standing and you can do it sitting. Take out your needles, yeah, we're casting up. One, two, three, four, five, but once I got a fish and love you, you can do it, Mary. You can do it, John. Is it a gnome or some 
another homely creation Wait and see, it might even be for a teapot 